Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy Siskin. I'm the author of these books, Playing Solo Jazz Piano and Jazz Piano Fundamentals, book one. And today I wanna to show you a really cool trick that sounds really hard, but actually is really easy using so what voicings and dividing those voicings up in different ways. I was initially inspired to try this uh, from something I heard from Danilo Perez, um, but I've hopefully made it somewhat my own. And Speaking of that, what I'm gonna show you is this trick, and then I wanna show you how I go about asking myself what if questions um, in order to turn this one little device into hopefully like 20 other things that I could play around with. So that's the plan today. We'll see how it works, no guarantees, but thanks for being on the adventure with me. So, okay. So what voicings, if you're not familiar with them, these are modal voicings, which means that we always find them within a mode. When we start with modes, we like to start with D Dorian because it's all uh, white keys, all right? All the white keys from D to D. So like the C major scale, but starting on D. Most of you know this. To form a so what voicing, we're going to take notes only within that mode. And we're going to do a fourth, a fourth, a fourth, and then not a fourth, a third on top, okay? And now the thing that confuses people most about modal voicings is that they'll say, okay, it's a perfect fourth or okay, it's a major third on top. But those things are going to change depending on your place in the mode. So the precise intervals are going to not always be the same um, based on what note you're starting on. So for instance, here's a so up voicing starting on D. It has perfect fourths and a major third. The next note of the mode is E. We'll build a so what voicing of fourths and a third on top. And we actually also get perfect fourths and a major third on top. But as we build one from the next note of the mode starting on F, you can see that we're not getting perfect fourths anymore, right? F to B flat would be a perfect fourth, but this is F to B natural, right? And on top, it's not a major third, it's a to C, which is a minor third. So the interval structure has changed slightly just based on where we are in the mode. So we don't call them major or minor intervals. We would call them diatonic intervals. That means notes within the mode. Let's keep going. If we start on G, again, we're staying with all white keys. So we end up with a minor third on top and this um, augmented fourth between F and C. So wherever you are starting, it's going to change. And that means that each of these voicings is gonna sound a little bit different, right? This one sounds different than this. And that one sounds different than that, which sounds really nuts, right? But these are all so what voicings because they're all within the mode. And we could apply this to any mode. So D Dorian, of course, is all white keys, but we could apply it to C Dorian, which is gonna be like the B flat major scale. It's gonna have an E flat and a B flat. I'm gonna do that slower so you can watch it on the staff. Um, so here's one starting on C, starting on D. This mode has an E flat rather than an E natural. So I'm taking that interval pattern and I'm applying the key signature of the mode to it. Okay, so those are so what voicings, uh, simple enough. Now, what I stole from Danilo Perez and uh, from his brilliant album, Motherland, by the way, if you haven't listened to Danilo Perez, Motherland, fantastic album, one of the best albums of the last 20 years, if it is within the last 20 years, um, is separating out the notes of this so what voicing. So I believe what he does on the album, although it's been a while, uh, is he plays the... Th so let's go back to uh, D Dorian, just keep it simple. Here's your first so what voicing. He separates out the top two notes and then individually plays each of the bottom. practice your voicings, this is easy to do really fast because you don't really have to do anything new. I'm going to walk you 
walk you through it a little slower just in case it's confusing. So I'm taking, I'm going up and down the scale using my so what voicings, right? And for each one, I'm separating out first the top third and then individually playing each of the other notes. And then I'll go up to the next voicing, play the top third, each of the other notes. Top third, each of the other notes. A little faster now. And it's kind of nice because it ends up being four, um, four chords or notes per voicing. So that, that fits really nicely within like 16 notes, say, right? One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a... All right, so that's, I'm pretty sure, what Danilo does. Um, and then it gets me thinking, of course, well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> what else could we do with that? So um, thinking about some other ways we could divide this up, we could go top third and then scoop from the bottom. Top third, scoop from the bottom. Top third, scoop from the bottom. All right, so remember the original just went down. This one's going kind of in a little bit of a U shape. Okay, that's cool. What if we go up? That would be easy enough. what if we put the bottom fourth together? Notice each of these questions is starting with what if, and I'm such a fan of that as you're learning to improvise. You know, take a concept and then ask all these, ooh, what if we try this? What if we try this? To me, that's how you're gonna kind of form your own style based on something that you're interested in. So what if it's... Well, I'm probably going a little too fast, so I'm taking the bottom two notes together middle note alone, top third together. Pretty cool. And now we only have three notes, so it works really nicely as triplets, right? I haven't tried this, but I wonder if I could put the middle two notes into a fourth, so. I don't hate it. That's pretty cool. Um, or we could experiment, and I actually think this isn't gonna work, but we're experimenting here. Uh, we could experiment putting some non-adjacent notes together. So it could be. So what am I doing? Right, here's my voicing. And I'm putting these two, the G and the F together. And then I'm putting these two, the C and the A together. might be wondering, I generally like to have three notes in the right, two in the left, just because my right hand is more agile than my left. Um, I could imagine playing it the other way. I don't think that, that would be like a piano crime. <laughs> I think it would be fine. Um, or what if we put these two together, because that makes a nice consonant note, and then these two together. say oh this is easy in D Dorian but it could be if you practice your voicings you could do it in any uh, in any mode or in any key center it just of course it's easiest to show and to learn in D Dorian then you have to move it around um, so I'm sure you could think of even more ways that we could change up the order you know My next
next thing that I want to try is adding in some chromatic lower neighbors to add in a little bit of color and connection. So what if we did... What am I doing? I'm still keeping this and I'm going from the bottom to the top, but I'm just adding in the note right below the first note of each grouping. Or we could try a chromatic upper neighbor. Pretty cool. Or even a chromatic enclosure. Whew, that's a lot of thinking. Or what if we did two chromatic neighbors into the third on the top? funky so that's kind of interesting okay so you can practice finding neighbors to each of these notes um, So there I'm finding a neighbor to the middle note. I shouldn't say middle, the, the second to the bottom note. Right? Now, I don't know how many of you watched Julio Cesar Barreto's um, appearance on this channel where he was talking about his favorite exercise and he was talking about the different ways to divide the octave. So, you know, the whole framing for this is that we're using the modal voicings uh, or the so what voicings within a mode, but we could choose to transpose these precisely. So for example, kind of a really cool sounding thing is if we divide the octave into six and then transpose this up by whole steps. So now I'm gonna take this literal interval pattern. I'm doing it differently now. Now we're not thinking diatonic. Now we're thinking perfect fourths, major third on top. This happens to be the same as we get to E. But then we're gonna go from E, we're gonna leapfrog a whole step to F sharp. Leapfrog a whole step from A to A flat or G sharp, whichever one you wanna think of it as. So I'm maintaining now that same interval pattern instead of thinking in any key. And you know, this is not going to match up with any particular key. This is just gonna kind of be cool sounding, but that makes it really good for maybe an introduction or a free solo. So now listen to what we get. sounding, I think. Or what if we alternate? So what am I doing? I'm going up, 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 down, 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 up, 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 down, 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 down. Or what about First one's a scoop, the second one just goes straight down. So I'm asking another what if question. I'm asking what if I do it in whole steps and what if I alternate between two different shapes? If you could do it in whole steps, you can also do it in minor thirds and major thirds. I might not be asked prepared to do this, I'm gonna try. So I always think about when I'm doing it in minor thirds, I'm gonna be hitting notes from the diminished chord. So. Cool, I sound like Chick Corea. That's cool. Right. All right, I'm 
alternating now between up and down. Or, of course, major thirds, in which case I'm thinking about I need to be hitting the notes of this augmented triad. All right. So hopefully this starts to give you an idea of what you can accomplish. Like, first of all, this phrase sounds cool. <laughs> uh, it's pretty simple, but it sounds really cool. I don't have to move my fingers at all. Uh, so it's very useful. Um, but second of all, hopefully it teaches you what you can do if you are really thinking in those what if terms. Because um, it's so valuable to turn one lick into 25 licks or whatever. So just a reminder, um, you can check more of these kinds of ideas out in my books, Jazz Piano Fundamentals, Playing Solo Jazz Piano. Um, and like, subscribe, tell your friends. I'll see you around here soon. Bye-bye.